Gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria is the distress a person experiences as a result of the sex and gender they were assigned at birth. In this case, the assigned sex and gender do not match the person's gender identity, and the person is transgender. Evidence from studies of twins suggests that people who identify with a gender different from their assigned sex may experience such distress not only due to psychological or behavioral causes, but also biological ones related to their genetics or exposure to hormones before birth. The diagnostic label gender identity disorder was used by the DSM until its reclassification as gender dysphoria in 2013. With the release of the DSM-5, the diagnosis was reclassified to better align it with medical understanding of the condition and to remove the stigma associated with the term disorder. The American Psychiatric Association, publisher of the DSM-5, stated that gender nonconformity is not the same thing as gender dysphoria, and that gender nonconformity is not in itself a mental disorder. The critical element of gender dysphoria is the presence of clinically significant distress associated with the condition. Some transgender people and researchers support declassification of the condition because they say the diagnosis pathologizes gender variance and reinforces the binary model of gender. The main psychiatric approaches to treatment for persons diagnosed with gender dysphoria are psychotherapy or supporting the individual's preferred gender through hormone therapy, gender expression and role, or surgery. Symptoms of GD in children may include any of the following, discussed at their own genitalia, social isolation from their peers, anxiety, loneliness and depression. According to the American Psychological Association, transgender children are more likely to experience harassment and violence in school, foster care, residential treatment centers, homeless centers and juvenile justice programs than other children. Adults with GD are at increased risk for stress, isolation, anxiety, depression, poor self-esteem and suicide. Studies indicate that transgender people have an extremely high rate of suicide attempts. One study of 6,450 transgender people in the United States found 41% had attempted suicide, compared to a national average of 1.6%. It was also found that suicide attempts were less common among transgender people who said their family ties had remained strong after they came out. But even transgender people at comparatively low risk were still much more likely to have attempted suicide than the general population. Transgender people are also at heightened risk for certain mental disorders such as eating disorders. Gender dysphoria in those assigned male at birth tends to follow one of two broad trajectories, early onset or late onset. Early onset gender dysphoria is behaviorally visible in childhood. Sometimes, early onset gender dysphorics identify as gay for a period of time. This group is usually attracted to men in adulthood. Late onset gender dysphoria does not include visible signs in early childhood, but some report having wishes to be female in childhood that they did not report to others. Those who experience late onset gender dysphoria will often be attracted to women and may identify as lesbians. Before transition, they will frequently engage in transvestic behavior with sexual excitement. In those assigned female at birth, early onset gender dysphoria is the most common course. GID exists when a person suffers discontent due to gender identity, causing them emotional distress. Researchers disagree about the nature of distress and impairment in people with GID. Some authors have suggested that people with GID suffer because they are stigmatized and victimized, and that, if society had less strict gender divisions, transsexual people would suffer less. A twin study suggested that GID may be 62% heritable, indicating the possibility of a genetic influence as its origin. In these cases, the American Psychiatric Association permits a diagnosis of gender dysphoria if the criteria in the DSM 5 are met. The DSM 5 states that at least two of the following criteria for gender dysphoria must be experienced for at least six months' duration in adolescents or adults for diagnosis. In addition, the condition must be associated with clinically significant distress or impairment. The DSM-5 moved this diagnosis out of the sexual disorders category and into a category of its own. The diagnosis was renamed from gender identity disorder to gender dysphoria, after criticisms that the former term was stigmatizing. Subtyping by sexual orientation was deleted. The diagnosis for children was separated from that for adults, as gender dysphoria in children. The creation of a specific diagnosis for children reflects the lesser ability of children to have insight into what they are experiencing, or ability to express it in the event that they have insight. 
Other specified gender dysphoria or unspecified gender dysphoria can be diagnosed if a person doesn't meet the criteria for gender dysphoria but still has clinically significant distress or impairment. The International Classification of Diseases lists several disorders related to gender identity. Significant revision of the ICD's classification of gender identity-related conditions is expected in the forthcoming ICD-11. The ICD-11 lists this condition as gender incongruence, under conditions related to sexual health, coded into three conditions. In addition, sexual maturation disorder has been removed, along with dual-role transvestism. ICD-11 defines gender incongruence as a marked and persistent incongruence between an individual's experienced gender and the assigned sex, with presentations similar to the DSMV definition, but does not require significant distress or impairment. Treatment for a person diagnosed with GID may include psychotherapy or to support the individual's preferred gender through hormone therapy, gender expression and role, or surgery. This may include psychological counseling, resulting in lifestyle changes or physical changes, resulting from medical interventions such as hormonal treatment, genital surgery, electrolysis or laser hair removal, chest-slash-breast surgery, or other reconstructive surgeries. The goal of treatment may simply be to reduce problems resulting from the person's transgender status, for example, counseling the patient in order to reduce guilt associated with cross-dressing, or counseling a spouse to help them adjust to the patient's situation. Hormone treatment or surgery for gender dysphoria is somewhat controversial because of the irreversibility of certain physical changes. Guidelines have been established to aid clinicians. The World Professional Association for Transgender Health Standards of Care are used by some clinicians as treatment guidelines. Others use guidelines outlined in Gianna Israel and Donald Tarver's Transgender Care. Guidelines for treatment generally follow a harm reduction model. The question of whether to counsel young children to be happy with their assigned sex, or to encourage them to continue to exhibit behaviors that do not match their assigned sex, or to explore a transsexual transition, is controversial. Some clinicians report that a significant proportion of young children diagnosed with gender dysphoria later do not exhibit any dysphoria. Professionals who treat gender identity disorder in children have begun to refer and prescribe hormones, known as puberty blockers, to delay the onset of puberty until a child is believed to be old enough to make an informed decision on whether hormonal gender reassignment leading to surgical gender reassignment will be in that person's best interest. Until the 1970s, psychotherapy was the primary treatment for gender dysphoria, and generally was directed to helping the person adjust to the gender of the physical characteristics present at birth. Psychotherapy is any therapeutic interaction that aims to treat a psychological problem. Though some clinicians still use only psychotherapy to treat gender dysphoria, it may now be used in addition to biological interventions. Psychotherapeutic treatment of GID involves helping the patient to adapt. Attempts to cure GID by changing the patient's gender identity to reflect birth characteristics shape been ineffective. Biological treatments physically alter primary and secondary sex characteristics to reduce the discrepancy between an individual's physical body and gender identity. Biological treatments for GID without any form of psychotherapy is quite uncommon. Researchers have found that if individuals bypass psychotherapy in their GID treatment, they often feel lost and confused when their biological treatments are complete. Psychotherapy, hormone replacement therapy, and sex reassignment surgery together can be effective treating GID when the path standards of care error followed. The overall level of patient satisfaction with both psychological and biological treatments is very high. Estimated rates of those with a transgender identity range from a lower bound of 1 to 2,000 in the Netherlands and Belgium to half a percent of Massachusetts adults. From a national survey of high school students in New Zealand, 8,500 randomly selected secondary school students from 91 randomly selected high schools found 1.2% of students responded yes to the question do you think you are transgender? These numbers are based on those who identify as transgender. It is estimated that about 0.005% to 0.014% of people assigned male at birth and 0.002% to 0.003% of people assigned female at birth would be diagnosed with gender dysphoria, based on 2013 diagnostic criteria, though this is considered a modest underestimate. Research indicates people who transition in adulthood are up to three times more likely to be male assigned at birth but that among people transitioning in childhood the sex ratio is close to 1 to 1. The term gender identity disorder is an older term for the condition in the DSM. 
The American Psychiatric Association uses the term gender dysphoria. The APA's DSM first described the condition in the third publication in 1980. In April 2011, the UK National Research Ethics Service approved prescribing monthly injection of puberty blocking drugs to youngsters from 12 years old, in order to enable them to get older before deciding on formal sex change. The Tavistock and Portman NHS Foundation Trust in North London has treated such children. Clinic Director Dr. Polly Carmichael said, Certainly, of the children between 12 and 14, there's a number who are keen to take part. I know what's been very hard for their families is knowing that there's something available but it's not available here. The clinic received 127 referrals for gender dysphoria in 2010. The TNP completed a three-year trial to assess the psychological, social and physical benefits and risks involved for 12- to 14-year-old patients. The trial was deemed such a success that doctors have decided to make the drugs more widely available and to children as young as 9 years of age. As recently as 2009, national guidelines stated that treatment for gender dysphoria should not start until puberty had finished. Varing Pharmaceuticals manufactures the drug tryptorelin, marketed under the name gonapethyl. At 82 pounds per monthly dose. The treatment is reversible, which means the body will resume its previous state upon discontinuation of drugs. Social gender characteristics are created and supported by the expectations of a culture, and are therefore only partially related to biological sex. For example, the association of particular colors with girl or boy babies begins extremely early in Western European derived cultures. Other expectations relate to approved and allowable behaviors and emotional expression. Some cultures have three defined genders, man, woman, and effeminate man. For example, in Samoa, the Fafafine, a group of feminine males, are entirely socially accepted. The Fafafine do not have any of the stigma or distress typically associated in most cultures with deviating from a male-slash-female gender role. This suggests the distress so frequently associated with GID in a Western context is not caused by the disorder itself but by difficulties encounter it from social disapproval by one's culture. However, research has found that the anxiety associated with gender dysphoria persists in cultures, Eastern or otherwise, which are more accepting of gender nonconformity. In Australia, a 2014 High Court of Australia judgment unanimously ruled in favor of a plaintiff named Nori, who asked to be classified by a third gender category, nonspecific, after a long court battle with the NSW Registrar of Births, Deaths and marriages. However, the court did not accept that gender was a social construction, it found that sex reassignment surgery did not resolve her sexual ambiguity. The psychiatric diagnosis of gender identity disorder was introduced in DSM-3 in 1980. Arlene Istar Leaf and Deborah Rudisil have characterized the addition as a political maneuver to re-stigmatize homosexuality. By contrast, Kenneth Sucker and Robert Spitzer argue that gender identity disorder was included in DSM-3 because it met the generally accepted criteria by the framers of DSM-3 for inclusion. Some researchers, including Robert Spitzer and Paul J. Fink, contend that the behaviors and experiences seen in transsexualism are abnormal and constitute a dysfunction. The American Psychiatric Association stated that gender nonconformity is not the same thing as gender dysphoria, and that gender nonconformity is not in itself a mental disorder. The critical element of gender dysphoria is the presence of clinically significant distress associated with the condition. Individuals with gender dysphoria may or may not regard their own cross-gender feelings and behaviors as a disorder. Advantages and disadvantages exist to classifying gender dysphoria as a disorder. Because gender dysphoria had been classified as a disorder in medical texts, many insurance companies are willing to cover some of the expenses of sex reassignment therapy. Without the classification of gender dysphoria as a medical disorder, sex reassignment therapy may be viewed as cosmetic treatment, rather than medically necessary treatment, and may not be covered. In the United States, transgender people are less likely than others to have health insurance, and often face hostility and insensitivity from health care providers. The DSM-4TR diagnostic component of distress is not inherent in the cross-gender identity, rather, it is related to social rejection and discrimination suffered by the individual. Psychology professor Daryl Hill insists that gender dysphoria is not a mental disorder, but rather that the diagnostic criteria reflect psychological distress in children that occurs when parents and others have trouble relating to their child's gender variants. Transgender people have often been harassed, socially excluded, and subjected to discrimination, abuse and violence, including murder.
In December 2002, the British Lord Chancellor's Office published a government policy concerning transsexual people document that categorically states, what transsexualism is not, it is not a mental illness. In May 2009, the government of France declared that a transsexual gender identity will no longer be classified as a psychiatric condition, but according to French trans rights organizations, beyond the impact of the announcement itself, nothing changed. Denmark made a similar statement in 2016. In ICD-11, GIT is reclassified as gender incongruence, a condition related to sexual health. The working group responsible for this recategorization recommends keeping such a diagnosis in ICD-11 to preserve access to health services. Intimate relationships between lesbians and female to male people with GIT will sometimes endure throughout the transition process, or shift to becoming supportive friendships. Intimate relationships between heterosexual women and male to female people with GIT often suffer once the GIT is known or revealed. Researchers say the fate of the relationship seems to depend mainly on the woman's adaptability. Problems often arise, with a cisgender partner becoming increasingly angry or dissatisfied, if her partner's time spent in a female role grows, if her partner's libido decreases, or if her partner is angry and emotionally cut off when in the male role. Cisgender women sometimes also worry about social stigma and may be uncomfortable with the bodily feminization of their partner as the partner moves through transition. The cisgender women who are likeliest to accept and accommodate their partner's transition, researchers say, are those with a low sex drive or those who are equally sexually attracted to men and women. In California, Assembly Bill No. 1266, the School Success and Opportunity Act, authored by Assemblyman Tom Amiano was passed in May 2013 by the state assembly existing law prohibits public schools from discriminating on the basis of specified characteristics, including gender, gender identity, and gender expression, and specifies various statements of legislative intent in the policies of the state in that regard. Existing law requires that participation in a particular physical education activity or sport, if required of pupils of one sex, be available to pupils of each sex. This bill would require that a pupil be permitted to participate in sex-segregated school programs, activities, including athletic teams and competitions, and use facilities consistent with his or her gender identity, irrespective of the gender listed on the pupil's records. The California Catholic Conference opposed the bill as unnecessary, as laws already exist to fight discrimination against transgender students. A spokeswoman for the conference said that the issue should be handled by school officials. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.